I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are here today for Sew Together Tuesday. It is, like I said, middle of the holiday season, lots of stuff going on. The project that we're doing today is a great last minute gift. So if you are looking for one more gift that you have to make, or a few more, uh, I made a few this week. And I, like, it's totally doable. We made a, a variety because I wanted to show you guys uh, uh, what the possibilities were. There's about eight more that I want to make, guys, and I can't do it. So uh, we're here. We have these. <laughs> and we're going to work through um, another kind today. So we're going to work through. I made one side of the pair, and then we're going to work through the other one. We're using the sleeper slipper pattern. So the, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is... Um, in particular about this pattern, but this is also a lot of the techniques you could use for other patterns too. So if you have another slipper pattern that you've been wanting to make, we're going to talk about what we use on the inside, how to make it softer, and all of that good stuff. I did change the um, order of operations a little bit on the pattern, so we'll talk about that and what I did there. Uh, Ellen is answering questions, so if you have any questions, put them up in the comments and Ellen will send them over to me. Otherwise, I'm just going to show you how to make a slipper, okay? Um, I think if there was anything else I needed to tell you guys, I think that was it. So one of the first things is this is how the pattern comes. Okay, so it has this big sheet, has the sheets, or has these all together. So if you want to make this in different sizes, you're going to need to copy this. So what I did is I just took some heavy uh, interfacing and I just copied them. So that's all these are, and I copied them and I put them all together so I have all of the sizes there. Okay, so I've got them all over here. I made the I made a new one. I want to reiterate that to transfer your markings. So there's a marking at the toe. I added one up here. So this marking is over here. Oh, Ellen says to remind everybody to share the video. Duh. Um, we need to share the video. So share the video too. Sorry, leave comments, but also share the video, and that's how we'll choose a winner. And at the end, uh, we'll send you a Shannon Fabrics Cuddle Quilt Kit. Okay, so Ellen will choose a winner. We'll send you a kit, but you can't win unless you share the video. So share that with all of your sewing friends, your sewing groups, all of that good stuff. All right. Uh, so here's the pattern I have. And let me see. I've got the other pattern somewhere. Here it is. So it's really just two pieces. The other thing about this pattern is this pattern doesn't come in shoe sizes. It comes in, I think, extra small, small, medium, large. I'm going to check really quick here. Small, medium, large, extra large. Okay. I made a medium for Audrey and she wears a seven and a half eight. Is that right? So seven and a half eight is what she wears. And so I made her that size and they fit fine, but her toe hit the end, she said. I made, I wear a nine and I made the large and they fit fine. I would think a nine, nine and a half would totally fit in the large just fine. Okay. So remember that the sizes aren't on there as for shoe sizes, they're foot sizes. Um, so that makes it a little bit funky. So hopefully that's a little guide. So seven and a half, eight, medium, nine, nine and a half large, eight and a half, probably a large. I um, okay. And there is a big difference between the medium and the large. So, so, you know, so that's the pattern. All right. That's what we've got. I've got my pattern pieces. I'm going to put these over here so I can get them out of my way. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all of our pieces ready. So the pattern originally calls for just like a cuddle bottom, which you could totally use and it would be soft, but it's also going to be super slippery. So if you've got any tile in your house or wood floors, that sort of thing, we're on cement floors. So like, honestly, if you had cuddle in the bot bottom of the slippers here, like we basically just like be able to skate around the house and then fall. I'm quite sure that is exactly how we would do it all the time. And, uh, so, so that's what we're, um, so we wanted to do it a little bit differently. So I use something called slipper gripper. Okay. Slipper gripper is this stuff. And if you kind of zoom in here, Audrey, you can, you can see the little, um, plastic bits on it. Okay. So it's just a really tightly woven fabric that has this little gripper stuff on it. It's specifically made for this. So I've seen a lot of like DIY versions of it that people are like, you could just use like little hot glue gun and like bake little dots on it for your own. And I'm like, just, just buy the package stuff. It's made specifically for this, for the bottom of slippers. Um, I know Cali Quilt Co has it and I'm sure some other shops do too. Try to get it from your local quilt shop if you can. Ask them about it. Um, and it comes in black and white. Okay, great stuff. And I can't remember I can't remember how much it runs, but it's 20 inches wide. So it's always going to be 20 inches wide. It doesn't matter which direction you use it. 
So you could probably get a half a yard and be okay for a pair of slippers or stock up and buy a couple yards, okay? All right, so then, so we're gonna use that on the very bottom. And then because Cuddle is super soft, but honestly it's not super cushy because all of that nap smushes down. So I wanted the bottoms to be a little bit cushier. So I tried it a few different ways. We'll talk about it more later. Today we're gonna use Soft and Stable in there. So this is from By Annie which is this stuff and it's covered with like the sort of a knit fabricy stuff here and then it's a layer of foam and then the knit stuff. So she uses this in her bags. If you've done any of her patterns, that's what she uses in the bags and it gives them stability because they're really nice. But it's also because it's foam, it's really squishy and then comes back. So I really like this. I also tried batting. We'll talk about that later. But I settled on the soft and stable is what I want to use for these. Okay, so I've got my soft and stable. I've got my... Uh, slipper gripper stuff, all cut or not cut out, but you know, set aside and ready to go. All right, and then we're gonna use the Sherpa. Somebody had asked about this, and this is what I really, I was super excited to use the Sherpa in here because um, it just looks like the in inside of a slipper. Look at how cute that is. Like that's totally like inside slipper material. It's awesome. So we're using this for the base of it, and then we're using the sparkle cuddle for the sides of it which as Audrey said, wow, that's soft. Like, yeah, it's great. Like people are amazed often by how soft this really is, even though it has all the sparkles on it. It doesn't mess it up. It doesn't make it, um, the sparkles don't fall off. Like the glitter doesn't fall off. It doesn't get off on your hand. It's, and it feels really soft. Like you don't even notice it on there. It's great. So we're gonna use it on the inside, the Sherpa on the bottom. The Sherpa is a different beast. So um, I can't remember who had asked about it on the I Love Cuddle group. Uh, but then could we talk about it? And yes, we can because it's different and it's a different kind of backing. So it's a lot, uh, it's a lot stretchier. So it's a lot stretchier than normal cuddle. So it'll stretch both ways really pretty well. Okay. So this one has a little bit more wobble to it. Um, and we'll use that for the base. So already just here, I've got like lots of softness, which is great. Okay, so those are gonna go together. That I'm putting some batting behind it. One that will give stability to it, okay, because we're gonna stitch the uh, Sherpa to the batting. So just like we use batting in the cuddle strip quilts, the batting actually adds stability to it so that that foot shape will stay the same. All right, so I've got that over here. And then these are my outside piece, and my inside piece, this is sparkle, Cuddle glitter, I think. Ellen can tell me. <laughs> I don't remember. I think it's blush. I think it's the color. Um, it's a sparkle cuddle, um, or the glitter cuddle. And I think it has both of those words in its name, though. And this is the chenille. Um, so this is chenille, which I really love for quilt bindings, but I also love it for things like this. It has just a really nice. Um, it's a little bit more solid of a feel. It has less stretch than some of the other ones. And um, yeah, so we chose that one to do for the outside. So that's what we got. All right. Okay. So now, talked about the fabric, we can start cutting out. All right, so I'm gonna put this away so I don't get confused. Is Teresa confused? Never. All right, let's start with the bottoms. So we end up with two tops, and normally it would be two bottoms, but because we're doing extra fluffy stuff, we're gonna have four bottoms um, that are gonna work as two, uh, just to confuse you a little bit, okay? So I've got a piece of interfacing that I'm going to use here because I'm going to do a little spray basting. So because I want to make this bottom fluffier or softer, uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to put these together and work with them as the same. We're going to do the same thing with the other two. So I'm going to use the, um, the OD 505, my favorite basting spray. We're going to use that and I'm just going to spray the soft and stable and then we'll stick the slipper gripper on there. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna lay this on here and then I'm gonna pat it because that's what we do with the 505. Okay, so that gets all stuck together and now it's gonna work as one piece. And this, remember, is gonna be my, the bottom of my slipper, all right? So now I've got the slipper gripper over here. That's what's gonna hit the floor and be nice and grippy, okay? Then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna use my batting and my little piece of Sherpa, and I'm just gonna put those two together so that they now work as one as well. Okay, do the same thing. Make sure that 
sticks. Okay, so now, okay, so come on over closer. We'll watch what I'm doing. So now I've got my pattern and I'm just gonna trace this onto my fabric. So there's my pen. So one of the things um, that I found is that this likes to move a little bit. So if you can kind of get a weight or just use your hand, you'll be okay. But it does like to move around a little bit. If I stick it to the batting, it stays better. Okay, so we're just going to trace all the way around it. The reason I trace it rather than just cutting it from here, because I did it both ways, is that if I, I have to hold this tighter to cut it, and so you'll notice it does this little pucker thing, so it gets off of where I need it to be. So if I trace it and then I cut it, I can follow those lines better. Okay, so now I've got the lines on there. And I'm just going to cut this with a rotary cutter. With the Sherpa, I really do, I'll show you a little bit, I just want to do it with the rotary cutter because it's faster. But with the scissors, I can come right underneath the backing of the fabric, okay, and I can cut kind of just right along here, and it's going to make a little bit less mess because I've got all of this nap that's just going to stick to the um, to the the backing of it. Okay, some little clips. All right. So now I'll show you. I'll cut the rest of it with the the rotary cutter, and it's going to cut a sharper edge. So you can see already there that it's just cut off all of that nap and it'll make a little bit more of a mess. But this is a pattern that because we have a little quarter inch seam on this, that actually having that really sharp edge will help me to be able to get a quarter of an inch better. Okay. So I'm just going to come right over here and whack that off. All right. So then I'll throw this extra away. And now I'm going to do the same thing with my soft and stable and slipper gripper. Okay, now I'm just going to put this over here do the same thing. Oh, you know what I did? The thing I tell you guys always, make sure that you transfer your markings. And then I always have to go back and transfer my markings because I'm really good. I do what I say and not what I did. Okay, so it's the front and the back of it. And we want to make sure and mark those on all of them. Okay, and they're the same. So the slippers are not right foot, left foot. They are just a foot. Okay, so that's one thing. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do this. Come all the way around. Oh, um, somebody asked, what kind of batting? I just used my regular Quilter Select, or um, not Quilter Select, Quilter's Dream. The Poly Request batting is what I used for this. So it's just a really thin batting. And because literally this one, I'm using the batting only to stabilize it. So in a couple other pairs I did, I used a cotton batting and I used a thicker cotton batting. Uh, like warm and natural, I think is what I used. And then I used two layers of batting instead of the soft and stable. Okay. All right, so then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out. Okay, you'll notice that um, one of the things that I do to make the cutting a little bit easier on these curves is if I move the fabric and not the rotary cutter as much, it's a little bit easier. Okay, so there we go. This one has a couple of little dark spots because it rubbed off from the black. It was I have it on bolts, so that's what that is. Just so you know, don't store the black and the white bolts together because they'll rub off on each other. Um, lesson learned. Oh well. Okay, so now I've got this. Oh, guess what I didn't do? <laughs> Marks. Okay, I'm gonna come back and do it again. <laughs> All right. So my front and my back. All right, we got those and I'm just using the Sharpie and I'm doing it on this side because when I pin it, so I'm doing it on the wrong side because when I pin it, I wanna be able to see that. Okay, that's the point there. All right, so now I've got my bottoms and I've got, so this is my inside, this is my outside. They're gonna to fit together like this, okay? So now we got that taken care of and we'll do the outside. So this is my um, the slipper, yeah, the slipper body basically. So you have to figure out which way you want the toe to go. On this one, if I pet it this way, my nap is running down the toe. So I want the nap to run this way on mine. I'll show you this way, it'll make a little bit more sense. So I can pet it this way and I can tell the nap goes that way. This way it ruffles it up, okay? So I want my nap to go this direction. So now I can try it on my fabric the nap is going this direction, so this is the right way for my uh, piece to be cut out. 
okay? The other thing I'm going to try to do is to try to get this line, and you can't really see it, and I can only barely see it, but there's a line in the fabric here, and I'm going to try, in fact, I'm just going to do a little mark here, I'm going to do a mark down here, where I can see a little bit of a shadow of where the chenille lines are, so I'm going to try to get those matched up, basically so that it goes down the toe, all right? So that's what I want to do, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I am going to use a couple of my little magnets to hold this because it likes to move more than I want it to. Those magnets are stronger than I want them to be, too. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to trace all the way around this again. So this is the chenille. This one comes in a few different colors. It's also very, very similar to weave. Um, so it's the same design, and weave just has sort of a frosted look to it. And I think it's like two different colors that are together, which is why it looks like that. But it's one of my favorites. And that would be really, <clears throat> excuse me, really, really cute for this too. So the chenille is a little more, um, more stable. So it's definitely an easier one. We will talk about using other Lux Cuddles for it, and you absolutely can, and they're beautiful. If you are new to working with Cuddle, I would suggest using uh, like a chenille or you could use a C3 or something that's a little a little less nappy just so that it's uh, easier to work with. Okay, so this one I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut it out with my rotary cutter. Okay, and even though this is a Lux Cuddle technically, you can see it doesn't have a whole lot of nap that falls off of it. So it's a little bit like the Sherpa in that way in that it's not too, not too messy at all. So again, if you're, if you're new to cuddle and haven't really decided that all of that dust is worth it, <laughs> this is a great one to start with. Okay, so now this is the part that gets a little bit funky because it's a really tight curve here. So I'm just going to kind of come up and do it the other direction. And I'll cut it with the scissors. What I found is probably if I used like the 18 millimeter uh, rotary cutter or something, I could get around this curve, but otherwise I was ending up with a really chunky, chunky bit around here, which I didn't want. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a shake. All right, and then that one's there. Um, somebody asked again, is there's a left foot and a right foot? No, there's just, just a foot. Okay, just one. All right, guess what I didn't do? <laughs> the marks again. I'm so good at this, you guys. Okay, let me try again. Okay, Audrey, I'm going to ask you to remind me on the next one. <laughs> I'm so good at this stuff. Like, I try, I do. My brain just gets, you know, I get excited about the next step, and then I forget that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, so this one, technically, I could just cut all the way around it, but I'm still going to trace around it. Um, yeah, because things like this happen, and it gets a little bit wobbly. I'll keep it a little bit straighter. If I trace it first. Okay. And I'm just using the black pen on this and always on the back, of course. Uh, the other thing is that this is one that I'm tracing and it won't matter if I'm using a black Sharpie because all of these cut lines will be hidden well within the seam allowances. Uh, somebody asked, could you sew all four pieces together before you cut the sole of the shoe? And I'm not sure if that means like for all these four pieces, because no, the way that we're going to put it together would allow, not allow that to happen. Okay, hang out with me. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut this one out. Again, it's the sparkle cuddle glitter, glitter cuddle. I don't know. It's the glittery stuff. It's fun. But it, honestly, those little glitter bits don't cause you any issues at all, ever. So they're not weird to cut. They don't do anything funky. They don't fall off. They're great. I'm going to have to make up that spot right there. And come back around and then use my little scissors to get that last little curvy spot. Okay, so now <laughs> we're going to do this. We'll come back here, get these marked. Okay, jeez, Teresa. Fourth time's a charm, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to mark this, and I forgot. I put a little mark down here. So this mark is not in the pattern. So this little one that's down here is not in it. But what I found is it is helpful when I'm trying to put these two together. Okay, so I've got the mark here. 
make sure that that worked with this. Yep. Okay. So when I'm putting it together, it'll give me another place to mark because there aren't other notches in here to make sure that it's even. So I'm going to give these both a good little shake to the side. Get rid of that mess. All right. So now I've got all my pieces. I've got my pattern pieces. I'm going to put them over here. And I've got my sole. So here's my top, my outside, my inside, my inside sole, and my outside sole. All right. So now we can start pinning and then we'll start sewing. All right. So I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to put these two together. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sew this inside seam. So in the pattern or in the, so bring it up. So in the, no, 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 oh. on me. Yeah. It's okay. So in the pattern, the way that she has you put it together is she has you sew the ends together here and here, and then you sew this seam together. What I found is that that was really hard to try to sew that little circle together on my machine. It was really having a difficult time to get through the machine okay. And so I ended up sewing it differently. All right. Um, so the construction is a little bit different if you get the pattern and you're like, that's not what she did. It isn't. I did it differently and it's mostly because it made it easier for me to work with. All right. So again, the nap is going this direction just like on the other one. I double checked it to make sure that they were going to match. If they didn't, it was going to be okay anyway. Because it was already cut out. I wasn't going back and fixing it. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to pin this. So I'm going to pin. So come on in. And I'm going to pin this all the way around. So I'm going to do the thing where I, that I like to do, where I'm going to pin an end. I'm going to pin the other end. Okay. And then I'm going to pin the middle. And I've got those marks that I put in there. So I can kind of look on both sides, get them to match. And I'll pin it in there. Okay. And then I'm just going to pin in between. So I'm going to do the same thing that I often do and I'm going to sort of pin further apart and then I'll pin in between. I'm not going to pin parallel to the raw edge on this because it's such a big curve. There's no way I could make that work. And so I will just be pinning very heavily. Okay. And I'm going to pin from one side. I'll make sure this feels like a little bit, a little bulky. So I'm going to kind of reposition just a little. And then I'm going to come in from the other side. And we're going to do this style of pinning a lot on this project because we've got some real fluffy bits. And I'm going to pin a ton around the curves. This one it won't need so much, but you'll see on the feet the pinning is, um, some might say, excessive. But it's going to work. And this is, this is why. It's because I'll, I'll pin the crud out of it. So I am pinning the big U shape, obviously. Okay, so I've got this whole thing pinned. One thing that we've seen, um, if you haven't joined our I Love Cuddle group, you should join it. But this is one of the things that people will question is that it's kind of bumpy. It's not flat. And that's totally the way that it's going to be. I've pinned it so that it's going to sew just fine. And if it doesn't look perfect after I've sewn it, you're going to be surprised that when I flip it inside out, it looks great. Okay, so we're going to come over here. Audrey will come around and we will do some sewing. Okay, so I've got my 9014 stretch needle stuck in here. I've got my Mettler thread, and I have it. I'm going to move this up to a 3.5 stitch length. I'm using the digital dual feed on my Baby Lock Crescendo, and so you would normally just be using a regular walking foot. So if you don't have the dual feed, you'll just have a walking foot, and you'll always want to use that when you're working with cuddle. So we're going to put this under here, and I'm going to sew it, like I said, with a quarter inch seam allowance. So it's a really small seam allowance. So these edges matching is important, and then checking those edges is important. So I'm going to get this in a little bit and take out my pin so I don't sew over it. And we're just going to sew all the way around this. Back stitch to the edge, and then go forward. Okay, so as I stitch, I'm going to take these pins out. If the pins get pushed too far in, I kind of have to push them out from this direction. So I like to keep them a little bit further out. Sometimes they just get pushed in. Okay, so these straight stretches are easy peasy. But then it's going to get a little bit funky over here. So it's easiest for me if I get this whole thing up here. And I'm going to keep some tension on the fabric. So you can see I can kind of pull it flatter. And that'll help it stitch better. And then I'll stop and take my pins out. Okay. Keep sewing it. As I work my way around this corner, I'm going to have to do some real finagling. OK, 
Okay, and I want to make sure that this pulls back. You can see it kind of wants to pull over this way. So I'm going to pull it back a little and I'm just going to sew around this corner nice and slow. So now as I get here, this back here is getting all tied up underneath my walking foot or my digital dual feed. So I'm going to keep repositioning that and work my way around it so it sews it nice and smooth. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop, reposition, get this U to come back up toward me. Push my pins out a little. Hey, there's the one I sewed over last week. Was that the week before? Oops. Okay, bring that around. We'll come straight back up to the edge again. All right, so now it gets a little bit easier because this can come back, oops, this can come back around. So now it's still flat underneath my machine. And I'll just come back up to the edge. Use my stiletto to guide it if I need it to. And then I will backstitch. Come up here, backstitch, cut my thread. All right. So we're just gonna stay right here and I'm going to pin it this direction now. So here is my piece. Okay, first I'm actually gonna clip these curves real quick. So it'll be easier if I do. So I'm just gonna clip in here along this tight U. Okay, so that that uh, spot will open up nicely when I do this. I found that if you don't clip those curves, what happens is this pulls really funny and it won't lay quite right. So make sure that you clip them. A lot of times with cuddle, we don't have to clip the curves into this one we do. So this is how it will look. Okay, when I turn it inside out. But first want to sew these little edges together. Okay, so I need to sew this together so that it becomes the other end of the slipper. Okay. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to match these seams right here. Now, one of the things that I did with the other one, I'm not gonna do it with this one, um, just in the matter of time and to see the difference, is that I did some edge stitching on the other one. Let me show you that really fast. So I came along here and stitched this here, right next to, so here's my seam. And then right here, I did a little row of stitching, so about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So I would do that right here, okay? I did it and it seems to make this pull in a little bit better, but we're gonna try it without it this time and see what happens. See if it's worth the effort. It isn't always so. Sometimes I like to do things the hard way just because I did it the hard way. Okay. All right, so I've got those pinned. Now I'm gonna get these pinned. And then we'll sew it right along here. And again, all of the seams for this are a quarter of an inch. So if that seems too small for you, you can always add another quarter of an inch so that you could sew it at a half an inch. Then you just wanna cut that extra off because we'll trim this down as well, even from the quarter inch in a couple of places because those seams are all in places that you can kinda feel and especially feel them with your toes. Okay. So we're just gonna come along here. This is real nice and thick in here, so I'm gonna come in and hold it down with my stiletto to get it to go underneath the foot, work its way past, and then come all the way over. Okay, do a little back stitch. Come on, machine. There we go, back stitch, cut my thread, and there we've got that. So at this point, now we've got the, that's the inside too, so let me flip it this way. So we've got the whole top of the slipper done, all right? Okay, so come on over and then we're gonna do some pinning. You can just come on this side, Audrey. All good. I'm gonna throw my pins over. And I'm basically going to use every pin I have for this next part. So let's start with the uh, sole, which is this one with the slipper gripper fabric and I've got it, you remember I, I spray basted it to the soft and stable. So now they're basically together. You could see I didn't super spray baste it, like they're gonna come apart a little bit. I don't really care, I'm not trying to get this to work forever. We did do one, and I'll show you, where I actually quilted, I didn't quilt this to it, I quilted the inside fabric to the soft and stable in a different method, and I'll show you that. But this one, I just leave it so that it, it'll work itself loose and that's fine. Once it's sewn in, it's okay. Okay, so this is where you will get a little bit confused. So lay it out like this. This is my inside fabric. So I know that this piece is gonna go on here because this will be the inside. 
This is my outer fabric, so my outer sole is going to go on this side. Now we're going to sew these all together. I'm going to sew these in these hunks, okay? So let's sew the outside one first, and I'm going to pin the back seam to that mark that I marked on it. And then I'm going to mark this one over here, or pin this one where the marks are. And I'm trying really hard, so this is one of the good things about cutting this with the rotary cutter, is that you can see a really nice hard edge to it. And so I'm trying to get this edge of the backing lined up with the edge of the soft and stable. So what happens when I do that, and you'll notice it really bad with the Sherpa, is when I squish it down, it's sort of like... It's like a cookie and the cream comes out the side. So you just got to keep an eye on that and make sure that it's in the right place. The other thing is because we are sewing not just a curve, but we're sewing a place that actually has like body in here. So we need our toes to fit in here. If we hold it too tight, this isn't going to pop up. So one of the things that I do is that I sort of squish it this way just a little. So I'll lay it down and then squish it up. And it's just the tiniest little movement but it gets it so it doesn't lay perfectly flat. So I haven't had any issue with using the slipper gripper for the base on the appropriate pattern. I know Jackie said that she's done it and she had a lot of trouble and so she has, in her with her class, she often has them cut the slipper gripper a size larger. And so you could do that if you're having a lot of trouble with it. I just like to add a little bit of a pleat into it and then it seems to, not a pleat, it's really just a a little extra right there. And I'm just going to do the same thing, push that up just a tiny bit, pin it in place. Okay, and I'm going to sew it from the cuddle side because I want to be able to see what that is doing and I don't want it to pinch too much. Okay, so I'm going to pin this and then I'm going to go pin the other curve and then I'll pin in between. So this curve is even crazier tighter and I really need to make sure that it is matching. Just going to do a ton of pins okay, and I'm kind of doing it a little bit by feel from where that hard edge is of the backing and I'm going to pin a couple on this other side to get it to try to be slightly flatter because it's really not going to want to be this is a lot of a lot of fabric and a lot of a lot of uh, foam there okay. now I've got this big spot in here so I can actually make this work in just fine. So if you get to it and you're like, oh, they're not going to match, they're totally going to match. Okay, we're going to make them match. Don't you worry. We will make it work. Okay. Are your arms holding out, Audrey? <laughs> we should have had you be doing uh, push-ups or something. People want to know why you love these pins so much. Oh, <laughs> do I love these pins? Yes, yes, I do. In fact, I have, these are the ones that I would recommend for this guy. Um, this is the box of uh, clover pins that I love so much. So we'll do a quick recap on why I love these pins. So this is from this box. These are the medium weight pins that they have. They're pink salmon, I guess, on one side, red on the other. These are their medium weight, and they're a little bit bendy, but they're really sharp and really long. I mean, what is that, like an inch, inch and three quarters, it looks like, okay? These are the same. They're the same length, but they don't bend as much, okay? So these are stronger. Um, so they're just a stronger, a stronger pin. So the ones that come in here are the solid coral ones, salmon colors, white, yellow, and the green. All right, and I have some of those. This is a different brand of yellow pin. Let's see if we can kind of zoom in on those a little bit, see if we can get the right light. There we go. You can see it a little bit. This is a different brand. You can see that the um, metal part does not go into the head so far. That means the head falls off. So if you have pins that the heads keep falling off, it's a different brand. It's not the clover pins. The clover pins, that, that metal goes all the way up. And uh, I think I've had one head fall off in the years that I've been using them. So uh, they're really, they're worthwhile. I think the box is usually around $12 or so. But it's well worth it because they are really nice and strong. The, so part of the reason I like them is because they're strong, they're really sharp, they don't lose their heads, and also they will um, they'll basically last forever, which is awesome. And they, uh, what was I going to say about the clover? Doo -doo -doo. I'll think about it. There was something else I was going to tell you about them that I really like. But they do, they last forever, they're really good. 
and uh, yeah, they're my favorites by far. Okay, so now you can see I've gotten to this side. This one doesn't look quite as poofy. Okay. I'm gonna keep pinning all the way around, just keep pinning. And then we're gonna sew it. And I'm just gonna do one side at a time. So you could technically sew on both soles and then sew them. That seems to me like you're gonna be dealing with a lot of pins and not something I would really want to do. So I'm gonna do them one at a time. There's enough pins, enough stabbing that's happening as is. So see if we can get over the top and you can sort of see that. Okay, so this is, if I can tuck this in, you can see it's a lot of pins all the way around it. Okay, this is the bottom layer. We're gonna pin this one all the way around. When we do the sole, we'll leave a space to turn it. The outside one, it's, uh, it's all the way around. We can see inside, right sides together. So here's my chenille fabric and my little slipper gripper. So right sides together, pinned all the way around. Let's go sew it. This one, again, quarter of an inch. Okay, and I'm gonna sew all the way around. I'm not gonna back stitch to start. I'm just gonna, just gonna sew, and then I'll kind of overlap it as I come back around. So make sure that you are not sewing over your pins. You can use your little stiletto here to shove it underneath. And as we come around this corner, be a little bit slower, a little bit more careful, and try to get these to all fit underneath. Even if you get a little pucker on these, it is no big deal, okay? That's the joy of cuddle, is that it will hide all of your little errors. So I'm gonna put my needle down and I'm gonna move all of this extra fabric over and away. And then I'm gonna start sewing again. It's really kind of bulks up right there. So I'm just gonna try to keep it moving through. Come on, little guy. It's like, but you usually sew so much faster, Teresa. I don't know what to do. Okay. All right. And then I'm just gonna double check this, make sure I've got my, I can feel my side under there, make sure that I'm catching it. All right, this is one that you'll wanna make sure you kinda look it over afterward. We'll do that from both sides and you'll see how very crooked my seam actually is. But again, cuddle great for that. Okay, so this is the place where it was kind of bubbly and you can see it'll kind of bubble up. I just push it down. I just hold it down. And it'll go right around it very nicely. Okay, so if it's not laying flat, you really are just fine. I promise it'll work. Okay, around here. And then we're going to come back to where I started overlap, do a little back stitch, cut my thread, and then let's check it out. Let's see if I caught it all the way around. I got real close right here, real close right there. But I think we're okay. Okay, see? Perfectly straight, even seam allowance all the way around. <laughs> Just the way it has to be. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is at this point, I'm gonna trim this out. And I'm gonna cut off the soft and stable. I'm trying not to cut the seam allowance or the stitching line. And really what I'm doing is cutting the soft and stable out of here. I don't really care so much if I leave the cuddle, so I don't really try to get that. But I do want to cut this out because this gets bulky. And especially you can see here where my seam allowance got a little extra. It's more like three eighths of an inch. This is going to add bulk to the heel that I don't want. So I'm just going to come in here. And I'm just going to cut that out with my scissors. Okay, and I'm cutting the soft and stable and the uh, gripper to, um, slipper gripper. Okay, so there we go. All right, I will do that. Then I'm just gonna leave the sides because they don't matter. If you want to, you can totally trim off your sides too. I'm gonna leave them. So now we can sew the inside part of the slipper on. So I've got my marks. I've got my marks on here. We're going to match those guys up. I'm going to get my pins. Come back over here and pin it all over again. All right, so now I've got my mark. I'm going to pin that first. I want to do my centers. And then I'll do the other end. 
Now this one we have to do it just the tiniest bit differently because this is where we're going to leave a hole that we can turn it inside out. I don't remember what she tells you how big the hole is to leave on that. I left about a three inch hole. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll take off some of this extra Sherpa nap. I like it because it comes off really, like it's, it's not like little fluffy fibers. It comes out pretty easily. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna sort of like let there be extra on the top and smaller on the bottom. Okay, so kind of just push it just a little. And this will pin together differently because this is a, it's two cuddles going together. The bottom with the soft and stable and the slipper gripper, both of them have zero stretch, like none. This one has more stretch, so it'll be a little bit different to work with. So be patient with yourself as you're, you're learning that. So even with the batting in it, it still has a little bit more, more movement. So I'm gonna pin over here, then we're gonna pin over here, and then I'm gonna pin that side. So I'm gonna leave a hole in the one side. I like to pin the side with the hole first because then I don't forget. Because it's really easy to forget that you were supposed to leave a hole and sew the entire thing shut. So we're gonna try not to do that. So I'm gonna come over here. I can get that. So you can see this looks like it's bigger. I'm totally gonna be able to work that in just fine. Okay, I'm gonna leave a hole right here. So let's see about three inches yep so about a three inch hole I'm gonna pin this real well and then I'll pin up the other side and I'm gonna put a couple of pins in here because that's what I like to do to mark my start and stop places is I just put two pins and that'll remind me so this is one that I did do this with uh, wonder clips so you may be wondering about using Wonder Clips, and especially with the soft and stable, it's easier. The clover pins make it easy enough to go through that just fine, but if you have Wonder Clips, you might wanna use them. What I found is that it was difficult with my machine because of the digital dual feed. I can't, I can't really get in there with the Wonder Clips. I have to take them out much earlier than I want to be, and I can only clip part of it. So if you have a digital dual feed, I really just recommend the pins. If you have a walking foot, you could use the, the Clover uh, Wonder Clips if you prefer them. All right, so just coming around here, doing the same thing. I kind of just push this up just a little bit, just to get a little bit extra on the top, the pink, because that's what's gonna come up over your toes. So I'm trying to just give it a little bit of a body, kind of easing it in, and that will help it both fit and give you some room in the toe box. Okay, so now we're here. This side, I'm gonna pin the entire way across because we're gonna pin that all the way closed. So I'm gonna have to get a few more pins, it looks like. Okay, and I'm, you can see I'm not super, um, not super tedious about which ones I like, which ones I do, like, I'm not really careful about which side I do, but I kind of go back and forth. So the pins are coming in from this side, the pins are coming in from this side, they do back and forth a little bit. I'm gonna sew from this side and we're gonna start at a double pin. So it becomes this really weird shape, okay? I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna sew all the way around and come around. This looks crazy, like that's not going to work, and it should work. We'll see what happens. It should work just fine. I've only made, how many of them here? <laughs> I think I've made this um, 10 times now, and it's worked every time. So we're gonna hope and pray that it works this time too. Okay, so I'm gonna get this underneath my foot nicely. I'm gonna scoot over here, let me put my needle down. I want to hand crank it because I'm coming real close to those pins and I don't want to, I don't want to hit them with the machine. Okay, so we'll get those out. And this is when I'm really going to use my stiletto and kind of help feed it through. So as I'm going, you can stop and take your pins out. I kind of let it slide and take my pins out, but you can totally stop, remove the pins. Okay. That's getting caught up already. All right, now I'm just going to work my way right around this. And as I come to these parts that are real funky like this, I'm just gonna lift my foot, reposition the fabric, get it a little bit flatter, and do it again. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep doing that same thing. So this is the time that if you are uh, one of those many, many millions of people who sew while they're sitting down, and you have a knee lift, then you could totally just use the knee lift at this point, just lift up your foot, 
reposition, keep going. I do not have a knee lift because I'm standing. So there's that. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this to go through. If this gets a little puckered in here, I'm actually not gonna care at all because it's the inside of my slipper. And um, I'm not gonna mind because it's, well, sorry, it's gonna be yours, Audrey. Maybe you'll mind. <laughs> She's like, mom, fix it. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind if it were mine. Honestly, if I were giving it like a Christmas gift, I'd probably make sure that it was good. It's interesting though, because like sometimes you'll be able to see the pucker and sometimes you will never notice it. And it really does depend on the fabric. So if you are using a luxe cuddle, you will never see that little pucker in a solid or like this glitter. And you might be able to see it a little more. Working my way around. Okay, so I want to make sure that was I left it. Took my pins out too early. Okay, we clip my thread. So if you have watched before, a lot of times I do this little L thing at the L brackets right here. You can do that. I just find it's really it's difficult to do with all of this back here. That I'm like dealing with a lot of bulk to try to get this underneath to get that little L seam. So I just decided not to do it. You can absolutely do it and it will help that turn. All right. So now we have this funky thing that then we have to turn inside out. So what I realized is that if I if I um, turn this part first, it's easier. Let's clip, um, let's clip a little bit right here though on these toes. I'm gonna clip just a little bit out just so that they'll turn a little bit smoother. Uh, the other thing that you can do is like this is a little big so you can totally just cut this down. You can have about an eighth of an inch seam allowance and it's totally gonna be fine on the cuddle. I will say you have to be careful when you're cutting because you can see like it's, it's hard to cut through all the layers evenly and uh, it's possible that you could snip a hole right here. It's very, very possible and somewhat likely that you could snip a hole right there if you're not careful. So be careful and I just snip around. So I'm gonna just cut this a little bit closer. You can do the Vs as well, okay, because that will help it turn. So you can see I have a little pucker in there. Okay, we're gonna see what happens when I turn it inside out. Probably nothing, nothing will happen. All right. So I'm gonna tuck this toe in. So this is the this is the funky part of turning this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this toe in and then I'm going to find the side over here. I can stick my finger in and I'm gonna find the toe and I'm gonna pull it through. Okay, see if I can get that to turn a little bit more. Come on, little guy. Okay, then I can get this through, I can grab that toe and pull it out. Okay, what I have found is when I'm trying to pull this out, if I kind of give it a twist as I go, it tends to help a little bit to get this really thick part out. Then once the soft and stable stuff is out, the rest of it will turn really easily. Okay, there we are. So now we're gonna turn both feet and then it's just as weird looking from this side as it was before. So now we've got two slippers basically that are touching. So then what we do, this is my inside. I'm just gonna turn this I'm gonna shove it all inside. Okay, use my fingers, I'm gonna work it down to the bottom. I've trimmed off the seam allowances, you saw that, so the toe is not as bulky. One of the things that I found with the first few is I wasn't cutting, I wasn't trimming the fabric after I was done and you can feel it down here. And when you're feeling that with the end of your toe, it's not as nice. Okay, so, ta-da! Now we're going to do a little, oh, remember how I talked about that needle I lost, Audrey? Oh, here's, here's, a, here's a needle. It's not the one I had, but I'm gonna thread this guy and then we're just gonna hand stitch that closed. So there's a couple of things that I found that make it a little bit easier. Hold on, reader's coming. Okay, so I got my thread. And I'm just going to do a little double knot. I got two layers just because I, I like to do two layers of thread. So it's a little bit stronger. Got my needle. And then I'm going to find that hole in the side. There it is. So I can pull this out. 
tuck that in just a little bit. Okay, it's just the tiniest, I mean, it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so it's, it's not real big, to say the least. And I'm going to clip this here, and then I'm going to start sewing. And I'm just going to do just a big, probably a ladder stitch. I was going to say a whip stitch, but I really just never do whip stitches. I know a lot of people do. Okay, get my knot tucked in there. Then I'm going to take a bit over here, take a bit over there. And I'm just going to sew this closed. All right, just sew it right up. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, just the last little bit. So the other thing that you can do here is you're you're going to sew this shut, and it's really you're going to have to hand sew it or just leave it open. It's pretty hard to get this into the machine. You might try if you're really really against hand sewing, you might be able to get that in there. Uh, it's just such a little bitty seam allowance. Okay, so there, I can not pull it too tight, pull it there. And then I'm just going to knot my thread, grab a couple of layers of fabric, make sure I'm grabbing both layers, do a little knot. Knot it once, knot it twice, and then I'm going to hide the tail underneath there. I'll stick it through elsewhere. Clip my tail. Okay, now my side is all sewed shut, and now I can truthfully stick it inside and leave it there. So one of the things that I found is that I want these to be attached. So I tried a couple of different ways of sewing, and I didn't particularly like it. But one thing I do like is I want to attach these two together. So you can't like this this heel part. I want the heel to stay in there for reals, and I don't want it to just come out. So one of the things, I did a couple of different things. The first one I hand stitched, and I just took a big knot through here. The other one I actually stuck in the machine. I'm going to show you how I did that. Okay, so I just get these. I feel this. You can't really see. Let's see if I stab it through here, through this seam. It's going to come over here, and see it's right by that seam here. So those seams are together now. So this is kind of a little quilter trick that you can use if you're a quilter. And I'm going to pin it above that. Then I'm going to come under here and I'm going to put this under the machine. I'm not going to stitch on my pin because I want to avoid that, but I'm going to stitch right over here just to secure those together. Okay, so this takes a little, oh, I have to re-thread my machine, darn it. Uh, this takes a little bit of finagling to get it under your foot. This is that time where you wish you had three or four hands to really do that. If you've got the needle lift, you can use that to lift it up. But I'm going to lift this up the extra, stick it under there, move it around until I've got to the heel. And then I'm just going to do a little zigzag. And it doesn't really matter what zigzag you use. I'm just using a little zigzag. And you're going to see it's not really going to want to move at all. So I'm going to kind of have to give it a little pull, do it back and forth just a little bit just to secure it. So if you want to do this by hand too, you absolutely can. Okay, then that gets that heel to stick together. I'll take this pin out before I give it to anybody. And then, especially you, my <laughs> gosh, it's like, thank you for taking the pin out. Okay, so then I can get my foot all in here and it's all stuck in there. Perfect, right? It's a perfect little slipper. Okay, so now let's talk about all these other slippers we've got here. All right, do you want to go around the front? And we will talk slipper choices, okay? So we can look, let me clear off my little table here just a little bit. So this is the one that I just made. This is the one that I made before. This is the one that I did the top stitching. You can see why I did that, not top stitching, but, uh, oh no, the word just went away, under stitching. So the under stitching here along the inside that's what this line is right here is the under stitching where I stitched the fabric here to the seam allowance to bring it this direction. This one I did not so you can see it wants to pull over. So that's what that is supposed to do and it did a very effective job with that. Really that is simply look. It doesn't serve any real purpose besides just making it stick in there a little bit better and not curl up the outside. Okay, won't really make any difference. Otherwise, these are nice and soft. They're squishy, squishy in there. So that's great. So then I did a couple of other ones, okay? So this one I did 
with the Demi Rose, which I love. And this one I happen to get a little Demi, like the rose right on the toe, which would be smart if I'd done it on both. But I didn't. I just laid the fabric out there. This one I did a... Uh, this one I did the just batting. That's what this is. So this is just batting underneath there. No soft and stable. This is two layers of the poly batting that I used before. So really nice and nice and um, squishy. Okay, and padded here, but not as padded as these. So the batting is a different sort of thing. This also has nothing. Just the two layers, just like this does. You, I wish you could feel the difference because because the chenille is like a thicker sort of nap to it. This one is feels more solid. You can even see it has like a better a better shape to it. The toe is a different sort of shape even though these are the same. This is just a lot more fluid. All right, and that's because it's just a softer fabric. So this one I did it and I actually put batting in between these two layers. This one feels immense. Uh, it has the two layers of batting and it has a layer of batting and a layer of soft and stable. Can you see how squishy that is? Look at that. Okay, totally different than this one which is like not not so squishy. This one's really nice and the outside of it gives it a lot of shape. So I feel like this one has um, the nicest shape to it with uh, the batting on the outside. Okay, and then that slipper gripper on the bottom. So then I did a couple more. Let's see what I did with this one. This is one that I did with the quilted. I didn't soap the bottoms yet. So this one I quilted all of the Cuddle 3 with, I believe, with the Soft and Stable. Yep. So the Soft and Stable is on the, the Cuddle 3 here for the inside lining. And I just quilted that and then I cut out the shape. So if you're going to do this, if you're going to quilt it at all, make sure that you quilt it and then you cut out the shape. So don't cut it out and then quilt it because it'll shrink. Okay, so that's what that is. That's what the Cuddle 3 inside. That worked out really nicely too. And then this is, I think, the Heather. I think. This one is a Lux Cuddle Frost, which has that gray um, sort of creamy undertone with the gray uh, lining for the Cuddle 3. This one just has two layers of batting in the sole and the Cuddle 3 on the sides, which was really, this was nice. This is the first pair I tried. And then we made this one. And this one I did just a little bit of embroidery on the toe first. So I got this embroidery from Urban Threads. You just want one that was, it's probably no bigger than two and a half, three inches. So three inches tops, I think, to get it to fit on here. And what I did is I embroidered it and then I cut it out. So I'm just, if you've watched it all, you know I'm just learning how to do embroidery. So that was something for me to figure out how to do it. This is one, this is an example of how this pulls out. I didn't clip this. So you can see that the white wanna, wants to pull out a lot more than say on this one, where it all hides in here and it pulls in. So that was me clipping that curve. As you can see, it pulls in, and then if you don't clip it, it doesn't quite do it, it pulls funny. Okay, so good to know. So you can do the embroidery on the toe. You could do all sorts of different fabric choices. You could do some, there's a lot of slippers here. Uh, guess what everybody's getting for Christmas? Slippers! I hope everybody wears the same sizes, basically, because there's just two sizes here. Um, but you could do all sorts of fun things with the toes. We were talking about, like, you could do monograms, and you could do cute little designs, and you could do some little uh, applique sort of thing. You could do all sorts of things to make them extra cute. We just wanted to show you how to do the basics and then you can kind of go from there. There's all sorts of different prints that are available. We have uh, the shaggies and we've got animal prints and we've got, you know, everything. So um, if there are any other questions,